Harun Rahimi. He's an assistant professor of law at the American University of Afghanistan and joins me from Istanbul. Harun, thank you so much uh, for your time. Bilal, they're speaking about this uh, transition uh, in Afghanistan, another one that we're going to see. If it does all fall under Taliban control, what is life under Taliban rule going to look like now? How is it going to be different from what we saw several years ago? It's all unknown at this point. And I would like to, before talking about that, I would like to say that although Taliban have uh, commanded, their, they've said that they've uh, instructed their fighters not to enter Kabul, but Kabul is still a very fragile place. There are many, there are a lot of armed people in Kabul. There is a chance of infighting different groups. And it's a city of 5 million people. The transition must happen uh, swiftly, bloodlessly, and orderly to avoid chaos, looting, and just this uh, humanitarian catastrophe. Coming to your other question in terms of what the future is going to look like, no one knows. Reports coming out from areas where Taliban actually do have control now um, uh, shows a mixed picture. There are reports of horrible war crimes um, happening. There are eyewitnesses, people, women saying that their, 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 their daughters were taken uh, by force from them uh, to be married to Taliban uh, uh, fighters. There are reports of uh, uh, summary executions of surrendered forces. There are reports of revenge killings. But on the other hand, there are also um, uh, reports at Herat City, where my hometown is. I would talk to people. They say the city is stable. Uh, the Taliban have said we're not going to harm the, the civilian population. Uh, and they uh, have said that the civilian uh, uh, government employees can co continue and work, um, uh, except for women. Women, they said, stay home for now. I'm just saying, it's a very mixed picture. It, it speaks to the fact that the Taliban uh, may also fraction from within. There the, the could be a moment, uh, this is gonna be a, it's gonna be a critical moment, uh, and it's not clear what's gonna happen. And Taliban have to transition at this moment, in my opinion, from a military movement, in from military to governance mode, meaning policing, meaning think of services. I mean, issues of bank run is a huge issue. Taliban are de facto government in most of Afghanistan right now. Kabul is a huge price, and every every eye is in Kabul because it's a city of five million people and has a lot of importance for the future legitimacy of the Taliban and the government, uh, in domestic and international legitimacy of it. But the, we should not forget that there is a lot more happening in Afghanistan, and Taliban have to raise up to the moments, actually put the rhetoric to use at this point. And uh, they are they they have Taliban have been what they have been, but the question is what they are going to be, and there are competing stories out there. There is a horrible possibility, uh, and there is a, 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 a not so horrible possibility. I don't know where we are headed, but all of it is happening at once, and really no one knows what the future holds. And I think that's the deep root of all of this. When you talk to people, they express despair. They just want to leave. They don't feel like they have a future. And it's mostly because they just don't know what the future is going to be like, and what they hear uh, is not promising at all. Yeah, it sounds like it's such a fluid situation uh, right now. We're getting so many reports coming in just by the minute of what's happening on the ground. And so many people, like you said, so unsure of, of what's going on. And since the Taliban's advance started, I mean, this was probably just about 10 days ago. It's been so quick um, and many it's caught many people by surprise. However, is it a result of preparedness meeting opportunity because the Taliban has been regrouping for several years now and then the US and uh, foreigners said that they would be withdrawing withdrawing rather uh, their troops that started in May um, and then we saw the Taliban at advance so was this something that was inevitable I mean, in hindsight, uh, you can identify many factors I mean there was a crisis of legitimacy for sure unfolding um, and there are roots of that going back to the, the earlier moments of 2001, the war, the way the war on terror was handled, the, the way um, the, the current political system was set up, and the overly centralized system. I mean, you can look at that. You can look at the uh, military preparedness. I mean, New York Times came up with a report that said that there were a large number of ghost troops, a staggering number of ghost troops within Afghanistan forces. So Afghanistan did not have the numbers uh, it thought it, it did. There was a moral factor, U.S. Um, emboldening the Taliban, giving them the, 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 the kind of this, this message that they have won, empowered their soldiers and demoralized Afghan soldiers. There were side dealings happening. The uh, many um, local leaders 
many provincial governors close to the government switch sides. They did not last. I mean, this, and I think this is going to be studied for years to come. The the situation. It's just, it's not a. A lot of people are looking for easy explanation. I don't think one such an easy explanation exists. I think for now is what the question that we should ask right now is what what does the future hold? And those questions I think are relevant. Like questions like where the Taliban actually hold, or they're going to fragment? Can Taliban actually govern, or they going to, uh, uh, or the all the all the ec the economy is going to collapse, the education sector is going to collapse, and the the public service is going to suffer. I mean, those are the questions that need to be answered. How much international legitimacy is going to be important for the Taliban, meaning how much they're going to moderate their stance? Um, the rhetoric we hear from, we've, heard, we've heard from Doha, will that be implemented? Um, how much they care about domestic legitimacy, meaning how much they care to include others in power? I mean, these are questions, I think, that are that should be answered right now. And these are critical moments. Choices made right now is going to ha have make and break uh, effect. I mean, momentums are momentum is everything, and these initial moments, as uh, we have, uh, many have reflected on the initial moment of 2001, and have identified many faults, uh, many original sins that they link to what we see today. This is another 2001, in a sense, and this is happening right now. And the choices parties make right now is going to have a make an effect, uh, uh, make it or break effect on years to come. And I just hope that everyone has foresight. I hope everyone is realistic, have force, uh, foresight, and keeps Afghans in mind. I ask people, when they make a position in Afghanistan, to adopt the perspective of a head of a defenseless family in Kabul with no option to leave, or in Herat, with no option to leave. What would they want at this point? I mean, we have different... I mean, no one... I mean, I personally did not want things to get here. I was. I had different hopes for, for the future of my country. I, I envisioned a different future for my country. But at this point, I don't think that's where we should be starting. I think we should be starting at the point of what is the best way forward from this point on. And I think it just takes a lot of foresight, a lot of leadership, uh, Taliban reining in their, 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 their fighters, being willing to share power to lay a legitimate ground for a future uh, political system in, in Afghanistan. Taliban being sensitive to international legitimacy so we can still get aid. We can Afghanistan is a struggling economy, economically. No government has been able to govern Afghanistan with foreign aid over its history, going back hundreds of years. International legitimacy is going to be important. And the, the government forces also, they, the, the, the political leaders on the other side, must act now and might, must act swiftly. There must be an inclusive anti-Taliban team basically agreeing on how this transition is going to work in matters of hours. Time, time has passed. I mean, you saw the, the photos of Kabul. Even if Taliban don't attack, Kabul may crumble from within. Taliban is a city of 5 million people with a lot of bad actors, with a lot of guns, with a lot of organized militias with a lot of strongmen who have a lot of guns, and with a lot of assets. There are banks there. There is a lot. And you see already, like, movements happening, fires being shot. It's just a desperate, a, a desperate situation that calls for immediate action. Uh, yeah, um, I